It's easy to do something based on the size of your entire screen in CSS, but how exactly do you do something based on the size of individual objects? This is where Resize Observer comes in and it's incredibly powerful. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in this video, we're gonna be talking all about Resize Observer. And to get started, I just have some really basic HTML. You can see we have this container that has a box and some text inside of it. And I made this text editable with this content editable flag. So I can just come in here and I can change our text and you can see that our stuff is resizing as we expect. But what if I wanna change the color of my box when my box becomes smaller than 150 pixels wide? Well, normally you would think, okay, I'm gonna use like a media query for this to be able to check when my screen size changes. And then when it changes to a certain point, I'll just change my box color. But the problem is, is that these changes have nothing to do with my screen size. As you notice, going from here to here, my screen size hasn't changed at all. The only thing that's changed is the content on the page itself. And this is something that CSS has no good way to fix. So what we need to do is turn towards JavaScript. So I just have a simple script.js file here. I'm gonna get that box element. So I can say box is equal to document.query selector of that dot box class. And we're going to create a brand new resize observer and we're gonna observe the changes in the size of this box. So we can just say const observer equals new resize observer, just like that. And then in order to observe the box changes, we can just say observer.observe .observe, and we're gonna pass it the element we care about, which in our case is this box. So now this observer is observing our box and every single time that the box changes in size, we're going to call a function. And this function is the function we pass to our resize observer. This is gonna take in a function and this function takes in a single parameter, which is called entries. And these entries are essentially an array of all the things that you're observing that have changed. In our case, we're only observing one thing, but we could observe multiple things. And this array is going to return to us everything that has changed size that we're currently observing. So let's actually come in here. We're gonna observe the container as well. So we have something with a class of container, whoops, container. I'm just gonna call that a container. And we're gonna observe both of these and see what this logs out. So we'll say console.log observer, I'm sorry, entries. And this is going to be what's coming from our resize observer. So if we inspect our page over here, I just drag the console over. You can see if we go to our console, our array has two entries in it, the two things we're observing. The first entry here, you can see is the target, which is our box. And we can see on our content rect, it's currently a width of 209.125 pixels. And if I come in here, my second element is that container. And you can see the rectangle for this, you know, the width is 237 pixels. Now, if I come over to my screen, I just move this over, clear out the console, and I start changing my text you're gonna notice we get a bunch of new things being printed out in our resize observer. You can see if we come in here, our actual box, the content rect size changed. It's now 150 pixels wide instead of like 200 like it was before. If we come down here, we can check the content rec for this. And this content rec is essentially the same. It really hasn't changed. So in a nutshell, what's happening with the observer is we're observing two different elements. And then every single time the size changes on one of our elements, our resize observer is firing. It's passing an array of all the things we're observing. So our box and our container, and it's also printing out all the information we care about. So like inside of here, if I just pull that back up, inspect our page, go over to the console, you can see we're getting things like the border box size, the content box size, the content rect, which is probably what you're gonna use most often. We get also here the target, which just tells us the thing that is currently being changed and so on. So the main things you probably care about is the content rect and the target so you can know what the actual observer is observing. So let's stop observing the container. We don't really care about that. And what I wanna do is I wanna check, hey, when my box has shrunk to a certain size, I wanna change the color to blue. So we can do a really quick check here to say, hey, is this box small? And a way to do that is we can take our entries and we know since we're only observing one thing, the first entry inside of our entries is going to be our box. So we can actually just say here, box element is entries of zero, just like that. So now we have our box element. And what I wanna do is I wanna get the content rect and that is going to have like a width property. So we're gonna say when our width is less than 150. So when it's less than 150 pixels, we're gonna say that it is small. And then I'm gonna take my box element. I wanna get the target, which is pointing towards the actual box itself. I wanna get the style from it. And I'm gonna take the background color, whoops, background color. And all I wanna do is if it's small, I'm gonna set the background color here to blue. And otherwise I'm going to be setting it to red if it's not small. So by default, it's red. And as we add more and more text, you can see once it goes below 150 pixels, it turns blue. 
If it was above 150 pixels, it now turns red. So this resize observer is really cool because it allows us to observe the resizing of individual elements on our page, unlike CSS, because CSS media queries only care about the size of the entire page, while the resize observer cares about every single element, and it's gonna fire every single time they change. And the nice thing about Resize Observer, it's actually quite performant. And the reason for that is because it's doing all of the checks internally inside of, you know, your browser and you don't have to worry about doing polling or a bunch of like window resize events. It's just taking care of all that for you. And it's going to make sure if you have like infinite combos of like resizes that are leading to other resizes that lead to other resizes, it's going to try to help minimize those for you so you don't run into those infinite loops. So Resize Observer is great where you need to do these specific things for checking the size of a single element and checking when it changes. Now, if you enjoyed this video on Resize Observer, you're going to love my videos on Intersection Observer and Mutation Observer, which are two more observers in JavaScript. They're going to be linked over here. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.